Men of Reddit, when was the last time you cried? I work in a hospital. I worked Thanksgiving Day. The last patient we did a computed tomography scan on was this super old lady who was hard of hearing and had COVID. She was saying she was really scared and I tried to tell her we will be done fast. A chest computed tomography took only minutes. We finished, got her off the table, and I left thinking nothing of it. I get home, shower, and have Thanksgiving dinner with my fiancé and her daughter. It's just the three of us living in a house. Halfway through dinner my mind happened to drift and the old lady popped in my head, and I just started crying right there at the dinner table. My fiancé asked me what was wrong, and I told her about the old lady and how her scared tone broke my heart, and how I got to go home to be with my loved ones and how she is literally all alone, because no visitors are allowed on COVID units, and scared and confused. I just felt real bad for her and I didn't give myself enough time to decompress from work so I wound up just crying at dinner. Yesterday, I was telling my youngest daughter about her grandma, my mom, who she never had the privilege to meet before my mom passed away. After telling her some funny stories and some of the talents that my mom had, she turned and said, well, you must really miss her. It was very difficult to not completely break down in front of my daughter. Funny enough, I cried a few days before that as well. My older dog is getting towards the end of her life. She's starting to have trouble moving around. I can tell she's in pain every day. I laid with her a few nights ago while she slept, just so I could enjoy her presence and give her all the love she deserves. I couldn't help but break down while laying with her because I know there isn't much time left with her. I think what hurts most is that my kids are so attached to her as well. I know it's going to hurt for them, and it will be the first time that I can't fix a problem for my kids. Maybe that's what scares me most. Two months ago, I found my cat's dead body. It was a complete surprise to me. He was fairly young, only six years old. He was always a pretty chill cat. He was awesome. His favorite food was chicken, turkey in a pinch, and he loved junk food. He ate McDonald's french fries and chicken nuggets. His favorite was Cheetos, though he'd take regular potato chips. He even ate dry ramen noodles and also chocolate, like brownies or Oreos. One day I was upstairs in my bedroom, getting my kid pajamas from out of the unsorted clean laundry basket. I saw my cat lying on the floor in a vaguely odd position, but he was in the sun, which he sometimes did. I walked over and gave him a pet on the head. He cracked his eyes open and purred slightly, but didn't get up to try to climb up me. That was slightly odd. He was so affectionate that he'd try to climb up me pretty much any time I paid him any attention. I assumed he was just that sleepy, so I left him be. That night my kid had a nightmare, and I slept in her room with her. I woke up and got her daytime clothes from the basket. It was her first day back at school. They went back to in person after being remote for a while. I saw my cat in the same place. Same basic pose. That's when I realized something was really wrong. My cat would never have stayed there overnight. He would have moved after the sun went down and found a blanket to sleep under. So I checked him, and his body was already cold. As close as I can figure, he probably died shortly after I saw him the evening before. He had probably not responded to my patting him on the head because he was so weak. I just didn't put it together. I felt really shitty about this for weeks. I blamed myself for not being attentive enough. I thought that if I'd just been paying more attention, maybe he wouldn't have had to die alone. Maybe I could have gotten him to an emergency vet. The worst part was, I'd been kind of ignoring my cat for a few days while getting my kid ready to go back to in-person school. We'd needed to get some paperwork and school supplies and other stuff ready. I justified shooing my cat away because I told myself, after my kid goes back to school I'll have more time for the cat because I'll be working from home. I even had some activities planned, and I bought some chips and stuff I thought he'd like. It was going to be a real human and cat day. Anyway, I was a rack for the next couple days. I still tear up when I think about him sometimes. In early June my father died. He was diagnosed with brain cancer approximately five years ago. He had three horrible rounds of chemo and it just kept coming back. Finally they gave him radiation and that seemed to stop it, but it left him a shell of what he once was. He lasted for two years after the radiation but his strength kept waning. We kept pushing him to go to rehab, but finally he looked at us and said, I just can't do it anymore. Shortly after he started his decline, the doctors called it a failure to thrive. His initial passing was obviously difficult but I handled it as well as I could. My father and I were very close. We had a business together. I do not have a lot of friends and as I get older I honestly don't really see the need for them. He was my best friend. We didn't always see eye to eye. 
but he was always there for me in his own way. He was my banker, my lawyer, my therapist, and my advisor and business partner. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago I had a dream. He and I were working in a garage. This is the type of work we do. He was up in the attic at the opening looking down at me, and I was standing below him. I kept telling him to come down the ladder, but he didn't. He just kept making a goofy face, but he never said a word. And then I realized that he can't come down the ladder. Because of this weird dream logic, I realized that if he came down the ladder, he would disappear. So we just stood there looking at each other, exchanging goofy faces. I wanted to hug him and tell him how much he meant to me and how much I miss him, but I couldn't. I had to stay where I was and he had to stay where he was. When I woke up that morning, I was a mess for a little while. A little over a month ago, I cried and screamed in my car at 4 a.m. in the morning on my way to work. I found out for the third year in a row that I wasn't able to get into the program I've been trying to enroll so that I can practice my nursing profession in this country that I immigrated to. I felt so hopeless and thought about killing myself. I was close to driving my car into a ditch, but I got scared. I've been working to backbreaking jobs for nearly five years just so I can get ahead, but it doesn't look like there's a light at the end of the tunnel and I'm probably stuck in this situation. I'm not getting younger and it seems like my hope of having a nursing career is not gonna happen anymore. I know someone will say it's never too late to start over, but when you've poured so much time and energy into something it is really not easy to let go. I am feeling a little better these days and haven't had any suicidal thoughts in quite some time, but I still feel lost and hopeless. When you're a guy nobody really offers you any emotional support, people will lecture you on how to do things but it never feels reassuring. It just feels like you did everything wrong this whole time. This is gonna sound stupid, but I went to my ex and mine's old hangout spot, which was by a river under a tree in a nature preserve. She really did my wrong in the last couple days with her, abandoning and ignoring me for days on end, threatening suicide if I left, and finally told me she had been cheating on me, and told me I couldn't be loved and that I was nothing but a big joke, and told me to have a nice life alone. That was in July. Yesterday I went back to where we used to sit and laugh, talk, spend our time together and enjoy each other. I just sat down, held my own hand cause while I'm there it's just instinctual to have a hand to hold, and I turned on the music I used to listen to together with her, and just sat there crying because I letting memory and emotion take over for a good couple hours. Last real cry was a while ago, saw a photo of a three year old boy standing over a toilet throwing up because of the chemo treatments he was on for cancer, made him sick. Got home from work and my then three-year-old son came running to me. I picked him up and had an almost complete meltdown. Just cried thinking about life without him, and how lucky I was that he had the right brain chemistry and number of appendages and no health issues, and how sad I was for that poor boy and his family. Two weeks ago, on Friday, I woke up to yet another rejection email from a company I interviewed with. I've been out of work for nine months and the rejection finally got to me. My girlfriend was in bad with me and witnessed, probably for the first time in our five-year relationship, me genuinely doubt myself. I kept saying, I don't get it. I don't understand. What did I say wrong? I thought the interview went well. I just don't get it. I was pretty distraught. After a couple minutes I laid back down with her and then just plainly stated, I am sad. She'd never seen me said before. I've never been in such a state like that that I needed to actually admit it to her out loud. After we got out of bed, we hung out for a little while and she left to hang out with her mom for a couple hours. While she was gone I did my best to not think about my sadness. I played videos games, watched a couple TV shows and actually did a decent job convincing myself I was alright. When she got home she had a bag from the grocery store and told me to close my eyes. She opened the bag up and told me to open my eyes. When I looked in the bag I saw she had bought all the ingredients to make me my favorite meal, along with a some rum and coke. She declared she would be making me dinner tonight. When I realized what she had done for me, I welled up. A couple tears fell as I hugged her tight for several minutes straight while I steeled myself and truly appreciated having this person in my life. My girlfriend, God bless her, is not a cook, but she had read a recipe and was determined to cook me my favorite meal. She poured me my favorite drink, sent me to the living room and for the next 30 minutes frantically cooked us a New York strip steak, medium rare, natch, and mashed potatoes. She came out to the living room with our meals, put on a Pearl Jam DVD, mixed me another drink and we ate together. Same as we had many times before, same as we will the rest of our lives. Share your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Good luck.